tell me a little bit about the latest agreement and why this is a good time for this. I know you've had a lot of actually uh, getting the okays for titanium development projects. Um, what is the company up to and why is this particular agreement important? So uh, our Perion X, we're focused on uh, developing sustainable titanium metal uh, production from both recycled materials and eventually from uh, minerals being developed out of the United States, where we do own one of the largest titanium mineral deposits in the US. The deal with GKN or the partnership with GKN is about advancing uh, forward the supply of titanium metal plate, uh, where GKN will test that titanium metal plate and eventually look to incorporate it in its manufacturing processes. So GKN Aerospace supplies over 90% of uh, aerospace engine components today. They're an excellent partner, uh, one of the largest partners to have in the titanium world for aerospace uh, engine manufacturing. And it follows on from our recent partnerships with the Army and also Lockheed Martin and and uh, um, and some other uh, aerospace manufacturers as well. So moving forward with GKN Aerospace just is really important for us because it, it continues to showcase the want and need by domestic manufacturers, European manufacturers for a sustainable source of titanium metal, which we can supply into uh, in the coming years to alleviate the current issues with the titanium supply chain to date, which is that it's highly concentrated in places like China and Russia. Right, absolutely. And so with that, uh, you mentioned the U.S. Army, for example. You are actually uh, producing titanium plate for the U.S. Army. Give us some size and scope as you, as you talk about huge contracts, I'm sure. Um, how many plates, how often, what kind of size and scope do you need? Because as you said, getting these particular materials is quite difficult and having a partnership like this one with GKN is very helpful to move forward. Um, you know, it says, when it says produce titanium plate for U.S. Army testing, um, how many plates, how big is the plate? I uh, can't go into too much details, but at this point, it's it's enough play that, uh, that say, the U.S. Army and GK and Aerospace can test. So in, in the Army's perspective, it's it's essentially ballistic play. So shooting at the play, getting that, getting that uh, data back uh, so that eventually our, our military can use more titanium because it is lighter weight than steel. It's more corrosion resistant than steel. It's even stronger than stainless steel, for instance, to use it more in, in military applications in the future. So exact volume. Uh, something that we will outline over the coming years uh, with groups like Army and GKN and Lockheed Martin. If you look at any of those applications, you know these are these are large military platforms. These these can be very large contracts, uh, and for us, it's it's a it's going to be. Whilst defence will be not our largest part of our business, um, it's a very important part of our business and we feel it's an important part of the national security uh, within the US as well to be supplying into these supply chains. Um, so more details to come on the exact size, but, um, mm -hmm. but they can be very, very large contracts. All right, so it shows it was a good question because it means that uh, there is a lack of um, detail on what's to come, but part of that is proprietary and national safety information. It's evident. So um, that being said, let's move on also to another area of strength for your company, and that's rare earth development. I see some news out of Tennessee and uh, getting some okays for more projects. What parts are we talking about in that realm? So with the Titan project, which is one part of our strategy in, in reshoring the titanium metal supply chain, we have the titanium minerals in Tennessee, where we have the fully permitted Titan project there. But as a co-product, we do have the uh, the ability to produce, or we do produce as a co-product, the rare earth minerals. And in particular, we produce the rare earth minerals, which contain both the light rare earth elements, but also the heavy rare earth elements, which are critical to uh, electric vehicle manufacturers and, again, the defence industry as well. These are the rare earths that are we are heavily dependent on from, again, from China, and being able to produce those minerals here at home and supply into a growing supply chain that is being uh, funded and, and developed here in the United States by both the corporations and, and the government can be a, a crucial part to that as well. So it's a nice 
icing on the cake, I would say, to our titanium uh, industry or titanium reshoring thematic, that we also have this other critical material, critical uh, minerals that we can supply uh, into, into the United States. Yeah. And the GKN Aerospace is a new item for you, a new deal. But you already have partnerships with great companies um, or agreements such as Ford Motor, um, Lockheed Martin, which you mentioned, the Department of Defense and others. Um, as you spin this forward, are you concerned, and I know that you mentioned this earlier, and it's something that we always talk about when we look at EVs and the, the rare earth materials that are needed for EVs, but more so not just for EVs, just for the safety safety of our nation that so much of this is found and developed abroad rather than at home. Are you worried? Uh, so that's the whole reason that we started our period next. Uh, prior to starting our period next, I was the founder of a company called Piedmont Lithium, which is reassuring the lithium supply chain here in the United States. Also, a Nasdaq listed listed company done extremely well over the last few years. Uh, the reason for our period next is to reassure that supply chain. We start with uh, titanium metal scrap. There's a lot of titanium metal scrap out there which is not recycled. So being able to recycle that allows us to bring back into our supply supply chain, a domestic source of titanium metal. But as we grow that supply chain, we intend to lower the cost of titanium metal, grow that supply chain. Uh, groups like in the consumer electronics market, you would have seen the titanium iPhone come out. Uh, consumer electronics is a big business that could grow. The green hydrogen economy is a big business that can use more titanium. Military can use more titanium. We eventually see ourselves being able to backward integrate into minerals that are produced from projects like our Titan project in the United States to never be dependent on these foreign sources again. So yes, I was concerned uh, about China, Russia owning the supply chain for titanium metal. And that's that was the reason why me and my team started up here in is to solve that. And three years into this journey, we have gone a long way in solving that. We're getting a lot of support. We've got some great partners and we continue to get a lot of support from the US government as well.